February 3rd, 2022. Would you call it order? Councilman Here. Councilman Apple. Here. Councilman Eagle. Here. Councilman Eaters. Here. Councilman Petty. Here. Councilman Mary. Here. City Attorney Mullins. Here. Uh, there's two items that you wanted to just discuss among you. Uh, so the first of those is the Peddler's Permit. Uh, so this is just an open discussion, however you would like to do this. <coughs> Probably we'd be good to raise your hand so everybody's not talking at the same time, but um, yes, sir. I'd like to motion that we adopt um, this ordinance and on ordinance number four. Uh, that basically just takes out the twenty dollar fee, so keeps an application in there, um, but doesn't uh, doesn't charge the fee. Basically, second. Okay, one second. Any discussion on that? Um, just so you all can see, Danielle uh, printed these out for you. But if you go to the I'll find the page on here. The fourth page, 9 4 at the top right, it just takes out that number two down there, which is the permit fee. It just takes that out, basically. And everything else stays the same. So, so you would eliminate section two and then all the others would be moved up? Everything would be up. Okay. Um, the only thing that I talk about is the form would have to be changed from this, but it's two readings. So it would be passed in the first and then the second reading of the next time. Um, and then the filling out would be different here. So the form would have to be. But but as, as far as the content, any further discussion? I'd like to suspend the rules so that we could have, I'd make a motion that we, I know I can't make a motion, but I'd like to suspend the rules so that we could have um, Mr. Bill Woodard speak if he'd like to speak. To speak to this motion? Um, this is discussion on this motion to, right now. It I, does I think it pertains to it. Yeah, I mean, I'll say. Okay, yes, sir. I'm, first of all, I'm going to say I'm going to, I'm going to vote for this right here. It was my understanding that, that a workshop we don't, we're not allowed to do well, we have motions to and whatnot. But we have to have a regular agenda. So yeah, I, think it, it, I think it would probably be better, honestly, if y'all voted on this in a regular meeting. Yeah, that's right. But y'all can come together tonight to, to discuss, the, to get your thoughts together on maybe how you want to vote on it in the regular well, and meeting it, tonight. It is an item on our agenda for the regular meeting. So it doesn't yeah. make difference to me. I thought this was a... No. Uh, no. I just wanted it not to come back and bite us in the butt, so to speak. Well, to I'm confused about the special call meeting versus workshop myself. Yeah, so. I thought it was a call <laughs> meeting. We need to clarify that. So. Well, let, well, let me give you what MTAS told me. MTAS told me that we can have, you can have workshops, okay? Your, your, the city charter doesn't allow, doesn't say anything about specifically y'all having workshops or not having workshops. And she said that it was fine for you to have workshops. We can call them whatever we want to call them. Whatever you guys want to call them, you can call them. It's just that you have to publish that you're going to have a workshop, what you're going to be talking about, and give these give the public an <coughs> opportunity to come if the public would like to come. So I think any voting that you do probably doesn't need to be done at this forum. You probably need to wait till your regular meeting. Right. That's a good point, Sam. So it, it is an item. It's item item three on our regular unfinished business. So you go first. Uh, so is this, uh, have we established, is this a workshop or a special call meeting? Well, it, that's what he's saying. It, it's a workshop, but no matter what we do, it has to be open and, and the you agenda can, has to be You can call it whatever you want to call okay. it. We can call it a workshop. I mean, if, it, if it's a special call meeting, we could probably do the, this and get it out of the way. I'm, I'm good either way. Whatever. It I just, just, what I was told by Alicia, it has to take the same, if you're going to do a <coughs> workshop, it has to have the same formalities as a regular special call meeting. It's a special call, oh, I'm sorry, so, special call meeting so, workshop. Okay, the way we did this, we <laughs> put this, okay. Okay. Just, just by, ex if you look at the agenda, we left this just as a discussion, so you could discuss it, because this is already an item on our regular meeting agenda. So if you want to discuss this, but let's wait for the actual vote. Well, since I was labeled a special call meeting and a workshop, that covers both areas. So it we does. decide, we discuss it, we decide, we should be able to vote on it. No, no. With a special call meeting. You only can do what's actually on the agenda. So we, we said we didn't want to vote during this meeting, and that's what's on here. When did we say that? 
You it said it. We didn't. It wasn't a workshop. That's what you were saying. You don't want to it should have been labeled a workshop. It should have been labeled a special call meeting workshop. It should have been one or the other. If you want to go ahead and vote on this, go right ahead. I, I... Well, Bill wants to speak. Let's, have, let's let Bill speak. He's done a lot of work on this. So Barbara had a motion to suspend the rules. Okay. Rescind your motion so she I'll can... rescind the motion. <laughs> okay, so allow them to speak. Two thirds vote. Is all in favor of allowing to work? Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Bill, please. Okay. Um, please try to keep close to what we're talking about. If you don't mind. Oh, it's absolutely dead on. Uh, I presume this is where I need to stand. Yep. Uh, I'm hoping that what I can do here is uh, simplify things and maybe clarify some things. To give you a little background, I have talked to the Attorney General's office, I've talked to the Comptroller's office. And I talked to the city of Lebanon's business tax office. And uh, I talked to the uh, Wilson County Chamber of Commerce. And uh, here is what I came up with. Now, I won't read you the synopsis here. What it basically boils down to is this. If you look in this handout that I gave you, and you go to uh, page 9-6, The comptroller's opinion that was passed on to me and the attorney general's opinion that was passed on to me is that this particular ordinance applies to peddlers, transient vendors, street markers, and all those things that are listed there. It does not apply to festivals, flea markets, or anything of that nature. And if you look at 9205, this is the Lebanon, now, uh, Lebanon ordinances, which basically all the cities that I've read, their ordinances are the same. They're pulled from the state of Tennessee's boilerplate, and they read the same. They may change the numbers around a little bit, but basically the same. And if you read 9-2051, it says, restrictions on peddlers, be permitted to set up and operate a booth or stand on any street or sidewalk or in any other public area within the city. That's the restriction. Okay. If you say this ordinance that the city of Carthage has and Smithville and McMinnville and name other, other hundreds of cities there in Tennessee, if you say this ordinance applies to festivals and flea markets and things of that nature, then Every, every uh, festival that we've had, uh, Market Fest, Walton Days, Hometown Christmas, are illegal Excuse because of this. Uh, uh, Excuse uh, me, you're looking at Lebanon's. I'm looking at Lebanon's, just now. Hour, we have hours here. I, I, I'm trying to make a point. Okay, but if you May I? 9-4, you know, hours in Lebanon, it, it speaks to Street Barker, and that's what you're referring to, the festivals. Uh, motion to let him speak. Well, just to clarify, this is not our peddlers equipment we're looking at here. So and he's just giving us ideas what they, what, how to adopt to make our This, this is a peddlers. workshop, and I thought you were supposed to well, mean to give solutions. Clarify, that's not ours. You're talking about I am not talking about yours. I'm talking about Lebanon. Okay. And I, the reason I did this, you sent me an email um, six months or eight months ago, and you listed uh, Lebanon, Cookville, Gallatin, and you were using them as backup for what you were trying to do with a peddler's permit. So that's why I went and looked at Lebanon. Lebanon is close to us. The ordinance, if you look at this ordinance, it's pulled from the Tennessee Code Annotated, and all of them are the same with a few exceptions, okay? All right, if you look at 9205-1, it says that they're restricted. So what this means, according to everybody that I've talked to, this means the ordinance does not apply to festivals, flea markets, etc. It does apply to private peddlers, vendors, transient vendors, and, and, and people like that, etc. So the mayor was wanting to protect the people of Carthage, uh, and that's what this does. Yes, sir. So, I mean, in all technicality, though, ours 
points out only peddlers, transient vendors, solicitors, and street barkers. It does not pertain, ours still does not pertain to festivals mm -hmm. um, or anything like that. My it's point exactly. So, I mean, technically, technically anything that's been charged was illegal to charge if there was any fees charged on any of those. Well, well it's and, illegal because it's not covered under this. And, and uh, according, according to the Carthage City Ordinance, Every festival we've had since the beginning of the adoption of this ordinance was illegal. But it's not illegal because this does not apply to festivals. That's why Smithful uh, doesn't charge uh, the people that are coming to the Fiddler's Jamboree. That's why Lebanon, when they close the square down and do all of their festivities, they don't charge anybody a fee because this does not apply to that. And what it, what you can Lafayette, do, Gainsborough is also in that category. Right, Gainsborough and, and every other city in the state of Tennessee. I haven't called one that uh, charges this permit to no anybody that's a festival. Or permit. Now, that's a little different. Yeah, you, you need to have a permit, and, and, I, and I really agree with that. You need to have a permit because if you look at what Lebanon did here, which I think is really good, is uh, if we can go to the section that... Okay, if you go to page 9-5, and again, this is 11, what they have done is, if you, if you just flip real quick over to 9-4, 9202-1, it's exemptions. That's what's exempted from this ordinance. What they did is they made a special exemption for vendors of Christmas trees, uh, garage sales. If you have somebody in the city of Carthage that wants to have a garage sale in their driveway right now? No, they don't have to have that. Right. That's illegal, according to your ordinance. No, no, that's but not. If you, not on uh, private if property. But if you go on down, if you go on down through the, the, the uh, provisions of this chapter does not apply to feed flea markets. They exempted that. This chapter does not apply to sales conducted under authorized programs at the James Ward Center. You could insert city parks there. That would make Market Fest legal. Then, or during events sponsored or sanctioned by the city of Lebanon, you put city of Carthage there. And then what you do is, I come to you uh, in Lebanon, the uh, Wilson County Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Council, to my knowledge, are the only ones that close the street down and do fairs. They are sanctioned to do that by the city because they are supported by the city, as you guys support the Chamber of Commerce. So when the Wilson County Chamber of Commerce comes to the city, they get a permit for whatever they're doing on the square there, like I would come to you, get a permit for whatever's going on on the square, and then you guys would give me permission to do that, then we would block the streets off and do our uh, thing, and we, we are legal to do it, and you require me uh, proof of insurance, like they do in Lebanon with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Council, and then, you don't have to worry about any of this because it's a shank sanctioned event by the city. And you don't have to change your ordinances that much because this ordinance from Lebanon is almost the same as the one that you have in Carthage here. Excuse me, we have on the agenda to take off this permit fee, so why, why, I mean, I appreciate you're doing this, but it's already on the agenda to take it off. It, it's my, uh, if I may say, it's my thought that it would be dangerous to remove the fee. And here's here's my thought. If you remove, remove the fee from the ordinances, then somebody could make the argument that selling chairs on the side of the street or they're doing something else that you want them to do a permit, they're, they put up a food truck or something like that, that they're not obligated to pay any kind of fee because you've removed the fee from the ordinance. I think your ordinance can stay almost exactly the way it is except you just add those exemptions to it and you recognize that a festival and a flea market does not come under this ordinance and it needs to be an event that we apply for a permit with the city get your permission and then you sanction it by that permit um, and, and i just want to kind of i know one thing we're trying to do is um, the concern you had was protecting our businesses and, and I understand that and, and I understand that 
from her point of view, and, and I'll give you a perspective from a business point of view. Um, more businesses in an area is more business. Now, it's a, it's a bigger pie and it's a smaller piece of the pie, but you're making a bigger pie. And um, anytime there's an event down there, it's been proven time and time again that every business, if it's downtown, even when it's over at Market Fest, it increases business, it increases revenue in businesses because there's more people, and people are looking for different experiences. They might be looking for experience at business A, business B, business C. Um, so I think, uh, and, and I understand, I think it's a noble effort to try to protect our businesses, but um, like, I like when there's a food truck around. I, I mean, for my business personally, because I get more business. And it sounds, sounds like it wouldn't give you more business, but it really does, because you have more restaurants in an area, more people tend to say, well, let's go down and check this out. You know, and they, they, you know, they might not, they might eat that food truck, they might come eat um, a dessert at my place, you know, or go over to the candy bar and eat a dessert. So that's that. The, the, the second thing is, is like, I don't mind, I mean, I'm not gonna say I personally agree with having an application, but I don't mind having an application. Don't put a fee on it. Just put the just put the application out there so we know, hey, uh, person A wants to share sell rocking chairs. Um, I personally bought rocking chairs from person A, whoever sells them out there. I don't know the same person every time or not. Um, it was kind of neat to see that out there. Um, now, do we want like all the time things coming in and out or it starts getting out of control? Well, that's why we have that permit application be like well it's kind of getting to be chaos and we can just kind of back them off a little bit but I just don't see why and I don't see it getting out of control so we don't need to act like it is out of control because it's not but let's you know let's kind of let's just take the I mean it's not a lot of money I, I'm sure we spent a lot more money going into all that looking into all this than what it costs and just get rid of the money we can keep keep fees. Mm -hmm. it's kind of a good compromise you know and, and just to clarify I think I'm agreeing with you I I think it's good to have all of the street fairs and things we have. This particular ordinance is a state mandate that we didn't write, but the, the people who actually lobbied for this years ago were the business people who say, I don't want a truck filling in front of my business and starting to sell on the back of this truck without knowing who they are, if it's stolen goods, if they're competing with our price. So this, in fact, if you look at the application, it, it, a good application will say, where have you sold before? Is there a felony? It's, it's, it requires your um, your driver's license, so that we know whoever's selling is a legitimate. Whatever's coming out there is legitimate. It's not stolen goods. And I can't speak for all businesses. I can speak for maybe a few of them that I know, a few that I work with. I mean, it's very you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not yet. referring to the fee. I'm saying we have to have a permit. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not going to argue that's against the permit. Yeah. You know, cannot not yeah. have a permit. That's a state law, but we can do away with it. That's one, one, one fear I have is please, while you're sitting here, realize there is a worlds apart difference between a peddler like the mayor just described or a vendor like the mayor just described and a festival. They are two different yeah. things. And you need to let the city handle the festivals when we come to you and ask for a permit and not reach into that festival Nobody at Lebanon inside the festival pays any kind of fee to anybody but a booth fee. Nobody at the Smithville's Jamboree pays any kind of fee to anybody but the booth fee. The Jamboree committee goes to the city and they get their permit and they're not charged anything and they put on the festival. The Chamber of Commerce, Wilson County Chamber of Commerce, the Lebanon City Chamber of Commerce go to the city, they get their permit, the they don't pay a fee of any kind, the and the people that are inside that festival don't pay any fees other than their booth fee. I think yes, we're all in, excuse me, I think we're all in agreement about this. I mean, we can keep talking about this, but we're in agreement that the fee is not necessary, but we have to have a permit well, regardless. Let me say, what, what I'm hearing is one permit for the person that's putting on, or the entity that's putting on the festival, so that people from out of town don't have to come in and get a permit because it's going to be inconvenient for those vendors that are coming outside of Smith County to as come and get a permit. One, one permit. As long as he can guarantee the quality and that there's no stuff, I mean, he's got a guarantee for all of the vendors. Well, I, and I have no problem with that. I'm sorry. Steve. Steve. I was going to say the same thing. 
if we're holding all the days and the Chamber of Commerce is in charge of this, they, they apply for us to close the road, they apply for the feathers permit, it covers the whole event. We don't have to have 15 different people come in and fill out applications for permit fees. That's inconvenient. It'll cut well, down on the it's business. Just, it's common sense. Right. Let's just use common sense. I mean, let's make it easier so we get more people want to come here and join our festivals instead of making it harder so they don't want to get here. Okay, well, can I ask them, can we, can we look at the fees that are being charged? Because our fees for our festival park is only $20. What are your fees you're charging? We, we charge $40 for a uh, uh, just a regular booth and we charge uh, 60 or 80 for a food booth depending on uh, what they're doing. And what that money does is it puts the next event on and it also pays for events that don't make any money like hometown Christmas, uh, Halloween. Uh, we put candy out there. We don't get any money for that. Walton Day's fees pays for that candy. It looks to me like that this doing away with the permit fee for now makes sense. If we start having the wrong people coming in, we start having problems, we can address that down the road. I'll say this too. Every, I mean, it could be the Chamber of Commerce. It could be another festival that comes in. It's probably pretty wise to let the people who are experts at these events handle the events I'm not an expert. I don't know if any of us here, maybe some of us here are, I don't know. But we go ahead and give whatever, the, if it's a large organization that's going to have an umbrella of all people, we, we give them, they, they do their, they get their permit. And I mean, it's it's just going to generate revenue for everybody. And then let them handle it. It's, it's Honestly, I don't think it's a council, it's not the council needs to be involved in the city. Let me just ask you then, if there's a liability for that event, will they have it? I would say, yeah. If there's I mean, shows or yeah. There's so if it's, it's our it's, insurance requires that. It's like anything else; you can't guarantee anything's going to get handled until it happens. It's the unknown. Yeah, I mean, but I, I would say we 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 have a li umbrella liability policy that we have to get for events is through Palomitas, and we uh, list you guys as an additional insurer. Uh, so you that, still have that all under your same permit. Insurance, everything's required. It's just for one entity and not each booth. Yeah. So I agree. Any, any more questions or discussions? You all want to just talk among yourselves now? Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. I mean, I think we got it pretty much settled. Would everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Motion that we... Do we want to add any of these... Um, Exception that Lebanon has on it. Um, I mean, ours is pretty closely worded to that. Yeah, I think it's it pretty close. Yeah. So I, I think we just don't individually list the festivals and flea markets and stuff like that. But if we do a blanket permit, I think that will cover. I think it just takes care of that twenty dollars. Honestly, and we still everything's the same way. We still have to apply how we want to apply, and we all understand <laughs> that if the Chamber of Commerce is applying for the event. They're going to handle all vendors. It's, we're not going to handle it. Yeah, it's one permit. It's just, done. And I think that yeah, I just I just wanted to clarify that it's one overall umbrella permit. Yeah. yeah so does this apply to any? I'll look at it. Let me just ask you, so we're clear. clear. Is it any organization, whether we're familiar with that organization or not? I mean, if we approve them to, to have a festival, I guess we've approved them, so to speak, to do their business. I mean, that's, yeah. we can't discriminate. I mean. So when we cut to this item on the regular agenda, whoever is going to make the motion for however we're going to do the office of work, and we are turning money on that, but we'll, we'll handle that during the regular agenda. I don't, and I'm, There's I mean, only one, one item on here, and that's uh, the personnel policy. What would you like to discuss? Well, we made one. We had a workshop. How long ago was that? Months. Yeah. And there was a bunch of changes made, and I was given a copy of the personnel policy, and some of those changes aren't in there. Well, can we go through and? Well, one of them is the 120 days cap on the sick time. We we uh, agreed to change that to unlimited sick time. What I'd like to know also is where's the copy that was typed up during that meeting that was done with Attorney Moore. Of all the changes to right. take it out. Yes, so, but he sent us that. Right. He just went to that more so I, I don't know. All I can go by is what I was given. And who did he send it back to? He sent it back on to his phone, that copy. Well, that's not, that's not the change that we made because we agreed that all employees should not be capped off on their sick time. And it's capped at 120 days. That's one thing. 
Mm -hmm. Law enforcement on the holiday pay was supposed to get paid eight and a half. Were there minutes of this meeting? Did you take minutes? I don't think it was so. a workshop. No, minutes okay. were taken at a workshop. I wasn't even there. And what was the, oh, there's an MTAS guy there, so what was his name? Uh, Mr. Gary Jekyll. Mr. Grubbs. Mr. Grubbs. I think he was the one that did all the minutes, all the notes, and then he said to the attorney. I thought it was, but I thought it was too. I thought they're, it was they're interchangeable to me. No, Mr. Grubbs took all the notes, and then he sent it to Mr. Moore to make sure legal language was okay. And well, they were said, typing and changing while we were in the meeting. That was him, yes. Yeah, so I mean, and those changes did not get down to the actual personnel policy. That's like selling, they're allowed to sell two weeks vacation. Um, do you do you think this make a um, make a motion to change it? Well, why, why don't you just? What would you say about the law enforcement? I was trying to write down everything. Under the under the uh, holiday pay, each individual that's off on the holiday gets eight hours of pay. And if law enforcement has to work, we said they would get paid time and a half for that eight hours plus the eight hours. Well, that's it. That is it. That's in that. Version. I looked at it. I didn't see it read that way. Yeah, it is in that version. So if you would just make a list of what. Well, I, I, don't, I shouldn't have to make a list. That's the point. We went through all this and it didn't get transcribed and it was handed out to the employees not fixed the way we wanted it fixed. Okay, I want to know, I, my question to you is where did it get Mr. messed up and how did we fix it? I don't know. Mr. Grubbs made the notes, then he sent it to Mr. Moore, our attorney, to put into whatever proper language and that, then he sent that to me and then I sent a copy to Danny Hill. So that's I didn't it. get a copy from okay, Mr. Moore. Well, Who got the copy from Mr. Moore? I did. And that's the one that we shared. And, and that was it an email form or was it, how was it? No, it was in a long form, written out. It was written, it was what you had. He just sent you a copy of the policy. He didn't send it through email? It was through email. Was it not? Did he not send it through email? Mm -hmm. I didn't get any hard copies. I knew that Mr. Gribbs had worked on one and I didn't see that copy So just, I mean, again, it was done through the workshop. It wasn't done through an order that's changed. So perhaps we need to do that. Just no, perhaps we need to see that email to find out where the mistake's at. Because we sat down, we did it for two hours, and we redid the whole policy, and the changes well, aren't again, there. Again, Mr. Grubbs is taking the notes. We didn't have a formal, it wasn't a formal meeting. He was taking notes and he sent it to Mr. Moore. And then it was sent to, you, to your email. So if, if there are things you, at this point, want to change that are in there, just simply use it. It's changing. It's that simple. We have to have two readings of an ordinance and that changes it. It's not a big thing. Just put down what well, you it, feel is missing in there. I, I guess I'm, I'm missing the point. It is well, kind of a big thing when we sat here as not. a council. Okay, it was and spent two hours of our time. And we made the changes right. and they were not implemented. Like many yeah. other things that have happened in the so last three and a half years. That's my concern with that. Okay. Well, so. again, it was a workshop. Mr. Grubbs was there helping us. It was not a formal meeting but we need to do this probably you're right in a formal meeting just put it in the form of the changes you want we'll have two votes on it it's done it's i mean it's pretty simple if you'd like to do that i understand what you're saying i mean you shouldn't have to go back and look at it but you do it's it's i mean it's a well, I agree, but the thing is, the reason we had the workshop is so we all would agree on the changes, not just so, making changes to a personal. Just policy. to make it so we do change it. I mean, I would just I go through the changes that you saw because I don't go to that workshop. We, we find the changes you saw, let's vote on it, officially vote on it. Non-workshop, but to do that. Yeah, because yeah. apparently uh, workshops. <laughs> And it's oh, a waste of time. Change language on workshops. Yeah, now, so, so. I think after we got that back, didn't we have a vote on this? We should have. The original vote, I think, was in April when I wasn't here. And then I think okay. it passed in. Because coming out of a workshop, it's not a formal ordinance change. You have to still vote on it during the meeting. So whatever. But what I think what they're saying is they don't have it. If it's not done completed, they don't have it, what they worked on in the workshop okay. to make that vote. OK, then I, I guess to simply but take it, what we have here Make the changes and then let's just vote on it twice. Would you mind sharing that email that he sent so uh, that way? I'll dig that through. But okay. Yes, so, that would be. Great. But I'm pretty sure that's what we sent to y'all and we were going to have a formal vote. Let's go back and see if we haven't formally voted on that thing. I know it was formally voted on. Okay. So you had a chance to look at it when it was formally voted on. Did you want to make changes at that time? And you can come back and change it now. There's no problem changing we're, we're, it. We'll get through it. Um, okay. We'll figure out the best way to handle it is. 
Well, I, again, if we had a formal vote, that was your chance to say, I want to change this, this, and this, because it just came out of a workshop. That's not a and I guess that's where the confusion is, because we assume when we get out of a workshop that everything's going to be documented the correct way. Maybe that's often blame for maybe not reading close enough. Well, to, that that's seems probably to be, you need to read through these No, I, I understand. I'll, I'll, I'll take blame for it because I have a, a big role in just not getting done properly. Okay, well, but seriously, just go through, see what you want to change at the next meeting. We'll put that on the agenda, and we'll make any changes you want in there. It just takes two formal votes on it. Anything else pertaining to personnel policy? Yes, sir. Most to adjourn. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor. Aye. Thank you.